Welcome back to Not My Shop. Today I'm going to be doing something a little different. I'm going to be casting a blank using some uh, flowers I got from my wife's flower shop. These are dried flowers. I'm not real sure exactly what they are. But I got these and I borrowed a couple cans of flower dye. This is just for flowers it's a dye not a spray paint so i figured i'd test it out see what happens if i try to paint a couple of these i got two colors and i'm gonna mix them together in a blank with some purple dyed maple so here we go i'm gonna try some of this poppy Out pretty well. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Not really the color I was hoping for, but let's do some of the purple. I'm gonna have dye all over me by the time I'm done, I'm sure. Nice thing about this dye is it cleans up rather well compared to spray paint which doesn't clean up at all so I'm not real worried about my old beat up table usually has a tablecloth on it anyway a little tricky with that one. There we go. So I'm gonna leave those to dry. And then later, we'll come back and I'll arrange them in the uh, mold and we'll cast it into a turning blank. Okay, I've gone ahead and pre-arranged one blank that I'm gonna do, but I wanna show you how I did the, how I arranged the other one. I'm going to arrange it. Huh? This is a piece of dyed maple burl. And this is just the ends off of a piece of burl that were dyed with purple and pink and that's what color it ended up being. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that right there. Now I'm gonna mix in, I got a little bit of, uh, this is dyed baby's breath. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix in a little bit of that. That's it. And I'm gonna go ahead and 
cast it and just straight clear. Now, unlike other castings that you might do, when you're doing flowers, I find that it's best to put it in straight away. Mix it, pour it in. That way you don't, uh, it doesn't thicken and it will actually absorb into whatever materials you're putting in. Uh, it's different when you're doing pine cones. I'm gonna do a pine cone blank along with this one and uh, you'll see the difference between the two of them. But since this is just straight clear, I'm just gonna mix, pour, and I'm gonna mix a big batch to cover what goes in here. myself a paint cup. These are just paint cups from the hardware store. Uh, you can reuse them and that's what makes them great for doing resin. I just leave my stick in after I'm done and usually when I pull the stick out everything comes out. Let me grab a couple of cups. These are gonna be my Keller cups. These are just mouthwash cups. So now that that's all teared out, I'm gonna do six ounces of each resin. This is a Lumalite Slow Clear. And uh, I'll pump out. My pump's a little short, so I'm gonna do seven pumps. And see where that gets me. See where I am. Uh, one more pump. Seven point one five. It's not too bad. Clear that out. Now I'm going to do seven pumps here and see where that gets me. Close enough. If you're going to go over with one, it's better to go over with the B than it is the A. At least that's what I've been told. So I'm just gonna mix this up, scraping everything down real good. And then like I said, as soon as I get this all mixed up, we're gonna pour straight into that mold. And then we'll start mixing colors for uh, pine cone leg. We haven't done a pine cone in a while. These are, I believe, lodgepole pine cones. They're a little darker, I think they're a little older. They were picked up off of the ground, so I don't know when they were picked up. <clears throat> and uh, we have a lot of different pine cones, pine trees around here. Everything from juniper trees to cedar trees and 42 different kinds of pine. It's what happens when you live in Lassen National Forest. Don't get a lot of uh, hardwoods up here. Okay, that's mixed up good. Like I said, straight in. doing it straight early because we want it to soak up the flowers to soak up as much resin as they want so when I turn them they're solid at least that's what I'm hoping for I can see that they're absorbing quite a bit and I'm spilling a little bit which is 
pretty normal for me. Okay. Should be plenty. If it needs topped off, I'll top it off. I'm going to mix up four colors into this. I decided I've been doing too much pink. I know. That sounds crazy. So I'm going to do something with some turquoisey, coppery blue, and green. And we'll see how that goes. I'm going to save a little bit of clear. I like to add a little bit of clear to everything I do. Plus, in case that needs topped off a little bit, I will have clear. Yeah. A couple of sticks. And we'll start mixing our colors. I got colors from all kinds of different companies. This is from... Not real sure what brand that is, but Tecaroos. This is a coppery color. I find that micas, depending on uh, what exactly you're looking for, they tend to be pretty similar no matter which brand you get. Some of the random Chinese brands. I've used, I got little bottles like this. They don't seem to uh, pigment quite as uh, powerfully. A uh, Pearl X, which is usually my go-to, it uh, works really well, so does the Black Diamond, but this uh, Tecaroos I got from Amazon, it works pretty well. I don't really care for the bags as much, but uh, they're a lot cheaper. I can get a whole pack of these pigments for $20 when these are between 3 and $8 a keller depending on where I get them. And this color is called Steel. It's a really neat kind of metallic -y blue. And I'll add a little bit of uh, micro purple or macro purple to uh, all of these once I get the uh, pigment mixed in. Uh, for any of you that use Pearl X pigments, Micro Pearl makes it matte, almost like a Pearl Essence. Macro Pearl gives it almost the look of like little pieces of sparkly glitter, I think would be the way to explain it. Macro Pearl gives you Sparkle, Micro Pearl gives you shimmer. And uh, this here, this is from Pink with Pearl. And this is kind of a color shift blue to green color. I don't really think it shifts that much, but I like the color it gets. So I go with it. I don't have a whole lot of luck with color shifting pigments. I've tried all of them. None of them wow, have wowed me to the point where I can say, oh, that really is a true color shift pigment. Like when they spray a car with it or a motorcycle. Just haven't quite found that one. This last color is called Sage. It's from that same Tecaroos company. Guarantee I'm saying their name wrong. This is almost a chartreuse green. I do have a true chartreuse in my pile of pigment, but 
This one's a little darker than that, so we're gonna go with it. It's already heating up really quick on me, so I better hurry up and get this macro pearl. Just a little dab will do you. That mixed in there. Once this is mixed, we'll start pouring. I'm not even going to take the temperature because I know this is already getting pretty warm. One of the benefits of these paper cups is you can really feel the feel the temperature straight through them real quick. Some of the uh, plastic cups I've used. They don't really seem to conduct the uh, temperature as well. You can't tell in these if you're getting close. But these you sure can. But if you're not using Illuminate Clear, Slow, or Illuminate Clear, temperature isn't quite as important. Like if you're using a liquid diamonds, it's not as important to worry about temperature as it is with aluminum. So I got this mixed up as about as best as I can. We're going to hurry up and start pouring. This is not going to have any rhyme or reason because it's heating up so fast today. And I'll show you how to do swirls when you do pine cones, which is actually really easy. Because you just move around the pine cone and they do the job themselves. Hey, I measured that out pretty good. <laughs> okay, got all the colors in there. Now what you do when you're doing pine cones is you just move the pine cones around a little bit. And they do the work of the swirls for you. And it's okay if it blends a little bit. There they are. I went ahead and cut up the pine cone one and sprayed it with some clear spray. Just so you can see what it looks like all cut up. I think those will turn out really nice. And for the ones y'all really wanted to see, there we go. I think it'll work out pretty well. I didn't end up with any bubbles. There's a little bit of blushing from the uh, surface of the burl. I think they needed baked a little bit longer, but it looks like it's just on the surface. Uh, the blushing you get sometimes with burls and pine cones is usually from a little bit of moisture that's left in the material. But everything else looks pretty good. And uh, they gotta sit, these two have to sit for a day or so before I can turn them. These are good to go right now, so one of these will be up for auction this weekend, the uh, 4th of July weekend, along with a mystery auction that I have already made and got all set up, but I ain't telling you what that one's gonna be. So that's all I got for you this week. If you enjoyed it hit the like button subscribe do all that happy youtube stuff and i'll catch you in the next video